Were you so with your father there. when he passed? Um, like everything else with me and my father, we had a, a magical moment. Um, he was in this chair and he had the, the oxygen tube and then there's the hospice bed, you know, and I said, I got to get you into this bed, man. And he goes, he goes, all right, well, wait till the girls go to the store. And um, he goes, and I'll let you put me in there. So I, I grab him. And I lifted him under his arms, you know, and lift me. Everything hurt. And he yeah. let out a yelp like a kid, you know, and finally got him over to the bed. And I got him up in the bed and got his T-shirt straightened and got his blanket up on him. And they, all of that with lung cancer takes every breath yeah. they yes. have. I mean, he just, and it took 20 minutes for him to calm down. And then when he finally did, he, he said, Bill. I said, yeah. He goes, when are you leaving? <laughs> and, but that's how me and my dad were. We were really funny that like we always knew how to do that. And uh, my dad was a huge Elvis fan. My dad's the only guy that, that I've ever met that hates the Beatles. <laughs> because in his words, in his words, those fucking hippies knocked the king off his throne. That was his, that was his thing. So we always shared Elvis together and we would listen to songs and stuff together. And that night, uh, I had to go back to LA the next morning and I'd been there a week and, and you kind of know that it's, mm -hmm. you, you know, you guys, yeah. you get around it closer, you know that it's, we're real close. Mm -hmm. And he got to the point that afternoon where they had medicated him to keep him comfortable and he couldn't really talk, but his eyes were still connected with me. And, uh, I got to put my hands on his face and say, uh, you were a good father Aww. and you made me a good father. And then as I got as I got to the entrance of the house, I turned and did that Elvis turn around with the hands. <laughs> and then I, I walked away and I went out in the car and just fell apart. And then uh, I flew home. And uh, the next morning when I landed, uh, I was on my way in uh, to work and I got the call that he went that night. He went while I was right after, after right after we said goodbye, he went to bed and he went and that was it. So I don't know if you've heard about this before. How are there two kids in you my and family? Your brother? There's uh, three kids and a and a step kid. There's Got it. My step brother Tony, who I love and adore. There's my brother and my sister, and uh, that was our family. <laughs> who he didn't love <laughs> no, and adore. No, 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 no. I love them all. I just want to make sure that yeah, that the, there's an inclusion. The my step brother yeah. feels like he's family. Yeah, yeah right. he's, he's family as well. Same thing. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I remember my early on when my mom got sick, she called us into the room and she said, I did not come here so you could watch me die mm. because, uh, and we were like, wait, what, you know, we just want to take care of you. And she said, I am your mother. And I said, I, I talked to her and I said, I got this. Right. Uh, just let me be with you. We'll right. figure this out. Right. So my mom, you do know when it's close. And now I really know. I knew with my grandma when I went to take care of her, I s said to them, it's it's coming. Like I knew it was going to yeah. be within a few hours. My mom, I laid on her chest in that hospital bed in her living room all day yeah. to the point that I was in pain, holding her hand yeah. sideways like this. And her O2 sat kept spiking and her everything yeah. just, and the hospice nurse said, I've never seen anything like this. Like, I know she's going, but she won't go. And I did that for, I think about 14 hours. Yeah, I get that. And cause I wanted last, last drops. I want to be right for drops. her. I thought, I get it. so I get into bed at 12, 15 in the morning, 1230. And the bed is right next to her hospital bed. And she went in the next 25 minutes. Mm. After Raven's and Raven's so Raven's I lived with guilt for a very long time. Like I abandoned her during this, this time. And then my grandma asked me to come take care of her. And we were all sitting with grandma. I told them it's close. I started giving her the medication for secretions and pain and everything. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't go. We sang to her. We did everything because I didn't want to put her in that hospital bed because grandma, you. that would have upset no, her. She wasn't having it. No, no, she was in her recliner, Insane. her power chair. Well, that's, that's. I a, started playing guitar so she would just go. <laughs> As I, like, she she, so like, she was like, I gotta go. Like, One like of the last things she said to him was, it's not your fault. You don't have any time to practice. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that was fantastic. fantastic. That's it's not your fantastic. fault. You, you don't have time to practice. So we all finally around two in the morning, 
Yeah, you guys, you, you my sister and I, you go take a shower. My sister and I go in the next room because we didn't want to talk loudly in front of her because it annoys her. Yeah. And she went in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. So I talked to a hospice nurse on this podcast and she said, which made me burst into tears. She said, I see it all the time. Your mom did not want you in to see room. her die. In the room. And I think I feel the same way about my father. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, I don't when want you my leave kid it. in there. Yeah. yeah. When you leave it. That I think he was giving me the cue. Yeah. I really do. That it's their he last was joking, little but bit. he was also like, I need to do this. 